Good morning and welcome to our Mother's Day worship service at Bridgewater Baptist Church. We want to share a very special welcome to all those gathering in our community here in Bridgewater, especially the Pleasantville Baptist Church, as we're sharing these services together. In fact, over the next two weeks, their pastor, Mitchell Foley, is going to be sharing a two-part series on Jesus the Healer. If you've ever struggled or experienced illness and anxiety, especially during this period of COVID-19, we encourage you to join us over these coming weeks. We're excited for today's worship service, which is being broadcast with the help of several of our youth from the church. A big thank you to Sydney Grant, Cassandra Oakes, Maddie Whalen, Megan Vanderwall, and our children, Tristan, Emma, and Ava Kenny for their contribution. Finally, we want to welcome everyone joining us today over CKBW Radio. Today's broadcast is in memory of Roly Weil by his sister, Irene. And now as we begin the service together, may we join our hearts as God's people, wherever you are this morning, as we begin this time in worship. Let's pray. Almighty God, we gather this Sunday with hearts full of thanksgiving as we remember the gift of motherhood. We celebrate the woman that you have used to help shape our lives. We praise you, Lord, for from your character and from your life flow the virtues of compassion, faithfulness, patience, strength, and love. Whenever these virtues are demonstrated, whenever we experience such graciousness, and whenever our lives are blessed by such goodness, you are to be praised. Fill this hour with your presence, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
of kings Today we'll be reading from Luke chapter 2 verses 41 to 52 Every year Jesus's parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover When he was 12 years old they went to the festival according to the custom after the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a whole day. They then began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him sitting in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. They went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. I'm not going home tonight. I've got nowhere else to hide. What am I holding on? Empty promises have failed. Everybody else in ships have set sail. Thank you.
Again, we want to welcome everyone joining our worship service today online and over CKBW Radio here on the South Shore of Nova Scotia. As we celebrate Mother's Day, we're going to be reflecting today on the faith of Mary, the mother of Jesus seen here in the Gospel of Luke. As we are uh, journeying through Lent and Easter a few weeks ago, we continue to notice that the physician Luke, who writes the Gospel of Luke, paid especially close attention to women in the life and the ministry of Jesus. In fact, most of what we know about Mary comes from Luke. While the other Gospels refer to the mother of Jesus, they never really talk about Mary or provide, provide us with very much detail. It's Luke who actually refers to her over and over again as Mary. And most of what we know about this woman we find from the Gospel of Luke. We know from Luke chapter 1 that he based his writing of his Gospel account and the book of Acts upon the testimony of eyewitnesses. And it's important to recognize that as he tells the story of Jesus, two out of the first three dominant figures are women. Unlike the other Gospels, Luke tells us the story of Jesus' birth from the perspective of women. And from the intimate details found in his writing, it's very clear that Luke knew and interviewed Mary, the mother of Jesus. According to Luke, Mary believed that Jesus was the Christ. And it is Luke that tells us after the resurrection that Mary and Jesus' brothers were there with the other disciples. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And they were all together on the day of the Pentecost. Luke shares about Mary's faith over and over again. It's remarkable how much Luke stresses the important role of women in Jesus' ministry and their place in the story of Christianity. While the culture of this time generally relegated women as objects to be sidelined and silenced, Luke tells the story of Jesus very deliberately, balancing the importance of men and women. Jesus heals a man, then he heals a woman. Jesus tells a story about shepherds, and then he'll tell a story about women and lost coins. He'll talk about farmers and men and seed, but then he'll talk about women baking bread. It's interesting that Luke highlights women in Jesus' ministry and his teachings. And in Luke's Gospel, he pays particular attention to widows. Mark's Gospel mentions three widows. Matthew mentions widows once, John not at all. But in Luke's writing, we see 12 times Jesus talking about widows. But perhaps the most important widow of all is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, Luke never actually tells us that she's a widow. But it's certainly inferred that by the time Jesus is in his ministry, Joseph has died. And throughout the ministry of Jesus, Mary, his mother, appears at crucial moments at the very first miracle in his teaching, and then, of course, upon the cross and the resurrection. Joseph isn't there. And it is interesting that there on the cross, Jesus actually advises his disciples to care for Mary. And in telling the story of Jesus, Luke's provi Luke provides us with many personal memories and experiences of Jesus' mother. It's from Mary that we learn of Jesus being named. It's from Mary's own voice that we see the Christmas story here in the Gospel of Luke. There's one phrase that Luke uses in his Gospel that we want to reflect on today. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. Luke uses this phrase in two occasions. First, during the story of Jesus' birth, and second, today in the story of Jesus going to the temple at the age of 12. For Mary, this is a really emotional time as a mother. Within the Jewish community, the age of 12 is the last year of childhood. Although the tradition of bar mitzvah for 13-year-old boys marks the transition into manhood, it would come much later but the roots of this tradition are there in times of Jesus. During this time in history, 12 was also the end of childhood for girls. Mary herself would have been married and become pregnant with Jesus in her teen years. And every year after, Luke tells us she and Joseph would bring Jesus to Jerusalem with all of their wide family to celebrate as a faith community the time of Passover. And if this wasn't memorable enough, Mary tells Luke about this traumatic experience, a nightmare for anyone. Her son went missing. 
Now, it's important to recognize that Mary and Joseph did not realize at first that Jesus wasn't with them. And this doesn't mean they were bad parents. They were traveling with a large group of families, cousins and neighbors and friends, with all of their kids, trekking every year back and forth to Jerusalem. And on the return, Mary and Joseph have been probably tending to the smallest children, Jesus' baby brothers, when they probably assumed that Jesus was walking back with the other preteen boys. And that night, after all full day of traveling, they realize that Jesus isn't there. Can you imagine the panic as they run back to Jerusalem, looking frantically, trying to, to find where Jesus is? Perhaps family members went with them, searching. And not, not a quick search. They searched for three days. Three days. As a mother, I can't begin to imagine the fear and pain Mary must have been going through. When Aaron and I were new parents, I remember traveling back to New Brunswick to visit my sisters and my parents living in Riverview for our son Tristan's first Christmas. We'd stop by a restaurant where my older sister was working. We had the car running and I ran in to see if my sister wanted to come out and see Tristan who was sleeping in his car seat in the back of our car. When my sister came out, Aaron jumped out of the car to greet her. She came around to the back to see Tristan, and then we realized we were locked out of the car. He was safe and he was warm in the running car, but we were frantic. Eventually, we broke back into the car, but for over an hour or more, Aaron and I were helpless, looking in through the frosted car windows, and we were filled with fear. And here was Mary and Joseph. For three days, they searched through the city, for three days, I'm sure they feared the worst, because that's what parents do. What had happened to him? Was he alive? How could this have happened to us? But they do find him. Luke tells us, after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. I love how Mary does what any mom would do. While Joseph is there stunned in silence, she confronts Jesus. Son, what were you thinking? Do you have any idea what you've done to your father and I? We were worried sick. We've been anxiously searching for you. Mary is not calm here. Mary is like every mom I've ever known. She's furious. She's relieved. She's thanking God her son is alive. But out of her mind and angry at what her son has put them through. And here is this 12-year-old Jesus, her son, her gift from God. And Luke tells us, why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Not only does Luke share with us the memories of Mary from these conversations, he shares with us what Mary remembered about her state of mind, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and he was obedient to them. And it's here in the story that Luke tells us once again that Mary treasured these memories and pondered them in her heart. Jesus would grow in wisdom and stature before God and Mary would remember the journey there is another painful scene that Luke includes in his telling of the life and ministry of Jesus, one that we don't often reflect upon. It happens several chapters later in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is now a man on the road with his disciples, proclaiming the kingdom of God, a call to repentance for all humanity to embrace the heart of God, God's love which is showing power for the marginalized and those on the, on the edges of society a call for people to turn from darkness and to walk in the light of God's truth. And Jesus is surrounded by the disciples when, when Mary returns with Jesus' brothers. And Mary asks for Jesus. She wants to talk to him, perhaps to warn him about the danger of his mission that it will eventually cost him his life. But Jesus does not go out to meet her. He replies, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. And from that point onward, Mary's not mentioned again, not until Jesus is crucified. As a parent, I can only begin to imagine the pain that Mary must have felt, 
but she shows up. The gospel writer tells us that she is there at the foot of the cross and at the tomb and with the disciples through the birth of the church. It's Mother's Day, a day when we stop and give thanks for our mothers, a time to recognize the love and sacrifice of women whom God has brought into our lives. And Mary reminds us that to love our children is to be vulnerable. It takes great courage to embrace unconditional love. And our children, even though they love us, they will disappoint us. We won't always understand or agree with their choices. We will be frustrated by them. Being a mother includes tears of joy and tears of sadness from the moment they start to walk. You know, all three of our kids have been involved in theater and arts. Uh, we've seen them dress up and play parts from comedies to tragedies. But I remember this one play, it was, a, it was a fall and our son Tristan was in the high school production of Our Town. He played Mr. Webb. I'm sure some of you have probably seen that play. Um, you, you see these kids, these high schoolers, in two hours and in an intermission, move from childhood to adulthood to the grave. And uh, it, it's gut-wrenching. I mean, as parents, we were an ugly mess, tears rolling down our cheeks. And then you go out afterwards and you greet all the other parents outside and all of us, red-eyed, runny noses, a complete mess. And of course, it's a high school production. So you get tickets as a parent for all four nights. And every night we go back and every night all the parents are there in the darkness of the theater bawling. Now we think back now and we can laugh, but we still feel that tenderness. Our kids are gifts from God and we don't know how, for how long. Uh, as parents, uh, we have been given this gift and we are a gift to our children. And I can just imagine Mary, you know, sitting under a palm tree, telling these stories to Luke, looking back, her life just kind of flashing before her eyes, the joys and the sorrows, all these things that she's treasured in her heart. And now in the age of the church, looking back and connecting the dots, starting to understand God's purposes in the beauty and the pain that her story and Jesus was a part of a much bigger story. On this Mother's Day, what memories are you treasuring in your heart? How might God be calling you to put your trust in him? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, you know the tangled ball of emotions and expectations that exist in families. You know the joy and the hurt that happens between people who love one another. Forgive us, Lord, for the way that we can push others away. Forgive us, Lord, for the way that we can impose our will in our way. Forgive us, Lord, for the way that we can worship others in place of you. Restore us, Lord. Realign our lives to your goodwill and fill our souls with anticipation for that day when all of your children celebrate together at Heaven's Banquet. All tears will be wiped away and death and loss will be no more. Amen. Amen. This next song is being performed by our children. It's called God of Wonders and it is a very special request. This past week I had the honor of... Um, sharing the story of my friend Zara to the Women of Faith Bible study that's on Sunday mornings. And um, this song, God of Wonder, has played a pivotal part in her faith journey, not only in her relationship with Christ and drawing her closer to him, but even um, as she was trying to learn English as a Somali refugee, she used she she drew on this song um, as inspiration as she learned the different words. Um, she she pointed out galaxy. She had no idea what the word galaxy meant. And so as she as she learned the words of this song and learned more English, she um, just became closer and closer to Christ. And so this morning we are just so um, happy to have Zara involved in our service in this special way. God of Wonders. Oh 
when only a mother's love can understand our tears, can soothe our disappointments and calm all of our fears. There are times when only a mother's love can share the joy we feel, when something we dreamed about quite suddenly is real. There are times when only a mother's faith can help us on life's way and inspire in us the confidence we need from day to day. For a mother's heart and a mother's faith and a mother's steadfast love were fashioned by the angels and sent from God above. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down. Good Lord, 
morning, everyone. This is Pastor Mitchell Foley from Pleasantville Baptist Church. I would like to just say uh, blessings to all the mums on this Mother's Day. I'm sure it will be a very different looking Mother's Day for many people. I have heard that Mother's Day is one of the days when the phone lines are most in use and I don't know if it's true, but I'm sure that in a year like this, uh, there will be a lot of phone calls made today uh, to mums. I want to invite you to pray with me on this Mother's Day, this prayer of blessing for mums. Dear God, we come to you on behalf of mothers, mothers whom you have entrusted with the care of children. We thank you for creating each mother with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for uh, the dedication and the late nights and all the chores that are done. We know the days may be long, but the years can be short. We thank you for the gift of times moms give to their kids, whether it's moms who stay at home, moms who go to work, or moms who balance the combination. And we remember especially how things are changed, have changed uh, for many moms and families uh, and many who are home now due to COVID-19. And we pray that you will help moms and families through this time. We pray that you give each mother strength, help each mom to see the eternal significance in the everyday tasks that they do. We know that moms make a difference. We pray especially for those who are single moms, those who have to lean on you for the fathering of their children. And even though they're alone, you haven't left them. Please protect and provide for them. We know that your arms are big enough to surround their children and to watch over them. We also pray for the women, the, the mother in a sense, who never had the honor of having biological children, but who care sacrificially for others and love others unconditionally. We thank you for those who have a mother's heart and we know that you see the heart. We ask that you will be the source of strength and living water for all mothers and their families. We pray that all of us together will know the grace of God that is found in Jesus Christ. Help each mother and family member to grow in their love for you. And God, you are the creator of life. You knit every single one of us together in the womb of our mother. You've entrusted parents with the care of their children. And help us to know that really it is only the Holy Spirit who can produce true spiritual change in the lives of our children. So help us to depend on you and on the Holy Spirit. May each parent, each mother find their rest in you and help each mom to know that you love them deeply, not because of what they accomplished or didn't accomplish, but because that's the kind of God you are. We also pray for those who grieve today, for those who are missing their moms. We ask for your comfort to surround those who weep we pray for the peace of your presence to cover our minds and our thoughts. We know that the enemy can never steal us out of your hands. He never has the final say over our lives. We are safe in your presence, whether in life or death. And so we thank you that your ways are higher, your thoughts are bigger, and we lay down our burdens and our cares and our concerns and, and our lives at your feet. Help us to love you, Lord, today and, and give us a fresh sense of your grace. And now I would like to leave uh, our moms with this blessing found in the Bible. Moms, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. And blessings on Mother's Day today. Oh, my days, 
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head And I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing of the goodness of God As we come to an end of this worship service today, we want to share with you this final song as a blessing, a blessing over you and all of Nova Scotia. This song has become a bit of a viral sensation on the internet during COVID-19. It's churches from South Africa, Latin America, the United Kingdom, even across parts of the United States have come together forming viral choirs, singing this single song of blessing. And so today, as we celebrate Mother's Day and as we remember that we are in this journey together through COVID-19 and the struggles we face as Nova Scotians, we pray that God's strength will be your blessing.
second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations we say thank you to our mothers. And now, may you all go into your week knowing that you are embraced by the love of God, a love that is sweeter and more tender than any you have ever known before. Amen. <laughs>